Um, moving on to our next story is Danny Morse. Uh, I'm going to ask Danny to come to the stage. Danny is our next inductee. He's a class of 2014 men's lacrosse player, and he's being presented this evening by current men's lacrosse coach David Neff. David? Um, tonight's a really great night, uh, obviously for, for Danny and his family and all the other inductees here this evening, but it's also a great night for the, the Carthage men's lacrosse program. Danny will be a, our first inductee into the Hall of Fame, and we couldn't have picked a better person um, and, and, and a better suited um, lacrosse player than Danny to, to be our first inductee. Last year, when I was uh, with our coaching staff, um, one of the guys asked me, Coach, Coach Neff, you've been here the whole time. What, what was the best team in your time here at Carthage? And I think by default, um, you know, one would go to, to our most successful team, which was our 2017 team that had won three uh, conference championships, been to the tournament three times in a row. I think they finished their last season uh, fifth in the country in defense. But as I thought about things, I told the guys that it was no question that the program that had its biggest impact, um, the season that had its biggest impact, and the group of guys that had the biggest impact were, were our 2014 uh, season and the seniors that led that group. Um, those That senior class um, finished their 2013-2014 season 30-10. and 10. Uh, the 2013 season, we were second or third in the country in, in scoring offense, and the next year we came back and we were number two in the country in scoring defense. So I think that that group of seniors really laid a, a winning tradition, um, a competitive greatness that really kind of catapulted uh, the teams that followed in those those three years later. What was also uniquely special about that 2014 class was it only included two seniors. And one of those men is here tonight, Danny Morris, who we are honoring um, as he enters into the Hall of Fame. And the other member of that 2014 class was, was Jack Meacham, Danny's good friend and teammate, who we lost this past August and will be honoring out on uh, our color field this evening. I think what made those guys great, in addition to all of their individual accomplishments, um, was again, the culture that they brought and who they were as, as people. Both Danny and, and Jack were very much driven not only by their, their internal competitive drive, but they also are very deeply caring and good people. And um, there's a professor at, at Harvard who talks about the happiness, um, the happiness principle, four things that lead to happiness in our life. And, and that's family, friends, having a purpose or faith and, and work um, that serves others. Danny and Jack brought those things into our 2014 culture, and it's a huge part of our culture currently here at, at, at La Crosse, and we are forever indebted to both of those young men. I also think too, and I know Danny is the one being inducted here tonight, but Danny and Jack really pushed one another competitively as well, and I think part of the reason Danny is up here tonight is how well the two of those um, individuals complimented one another. Danny was newcomer of the year, um, his freshman season, and the guy that finished second in that award was Jack Meacham. In 2013, Danny broke the school record in points, and in 2014, Jack surpassed the record that he had set his junior season and passed him that year. Danny finished with 256 career points, and right behind him was his good friend Jack Meacham with 249. They were both four-time all-conference um, recognized players. They were always on the dean's list, and I think if they were playing in today's landscape, they both would have been academic All-Americans and consistently all-region guys. So I am um, honored, and it's a pleasure to announce Danny as a new member of the Carthage Hall of Fame. So I, thank you, Coach. I'd like to start by thanking you right away. Um, the athletic department, the Hall of Fame committee uh, for selecting me for this amazing honor. My parents, my beautiful wife, uh, my, my two, two little girls who, for flying up uh, from Florida with me to, to support me today. 
Um, I was very f humbled to receive the call from Ryan Kane a few months ago, and it forced me to step back and reminisce about my time here and the time I spent here for four years. I began my lacrosse journey a little bit later than most um, as a high school sophomore when my school became the first in Southern Illinois to introduce boys lacrosse um, to their offering. Uh, we did not know what we were doing out there. Um, <laughs> It was rare to see us successfully pass the ball around the offensive perimeter without dropping the ball. Um, despite that, my dad was able to uh, somehow put an, enough highlights together and uh, on, a, on a disc to send out to some colleges because I just I, I fell in love with the sport and I wanted to continue playing in college. And uh, I was able to send this into Coach Neff. And um, I, I went and visited a couple other schools, but when I came here to Carthage, I could see the investment that is placed into both academics and athletics. And I knew with a, with a small school, uh, I, I knew it would just be a, a nice close knit group. And um, I'm very thankful for all the friends that I've made, not just in lacrosse, but also in, in, other, uh, in other sports as well. Uh, the first time I visited Carthage, it was summertime. It was perfect weather. The campus was beautiful, much like, much like today. Uh, I noticed that they were having an admissions event, I think, today, which, of course. Um, so it was, it was warm, and, um, but at that time I, did not, I was not able to picture uh, how freezing the walk gets from Johnson dorm over to Lentz Hall at 8 a.m. Uh, that wind hits like no other. I was not, not prepared for that. Um, and then also I play a early spring sport in which we go outside in 32 degree weather and hit each other with metal sticks. So I, I was not prepared for that either. But coach, I don't know if you remember, but my first fall off season, as a freshman was pretty brutal. Um, those quick high school highlights that my dad had sent in and was, it, it was able to put together uh, hit a lot of the inexperience um, and the college game hit me like a ton of bricks. It was a lot faster than I was used to and uh, I couldn't catch balls on our, Spencer Curley as he was mentioned was our goalie. Uh, I couldn't catch the balls on, on, on the clears. Uh, he was very mad at me, and I, I was rightfully buried on the depth chart that first fall before, before our spring season. Um, I, I, I actually still think about that a lot. That was the first time that I encountered some adversity. I was six hours away from home, and it was time for me to, to take on a challenge and grow up. And I remember coming home for Christmas that year and telling my parents, I, I have a lot of work to do. This is not a break. This is a time for me to to fill in the gaps of my game. And I, I carried my stick everywhere. I stepped up my training significantly and came back in January. And uh, I was able to earn a starting attack spot be right before our first game. Um, and so I'm, I'm really proud of that. And it was a, it was a time that I, I definitely needed to grow up. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to do that here at this, at this school. Um, I owe a lot of my development as a player to coaches putting me in a, uh, a place to succeed early on um, and the intensity my teammates brought to practice every day. Uh, this will be the one and only time I'll thank uh, our defensemen for being so physical every day in practice. Uh, we had some big guys that probably should have been playing football, and they love to hit. And uh, they're not here today, but this is the one time I'm giving them a thank you for that, because it definitely prepared me for game day. Um, but the memories I have from my teammates are priceless to me, um, and I'm especially thankful for the group that I've stayed close with and talked to on a daily basis. Uh, many of them, like, like Coach Neff mentioned today, are here for the alumni game um, later this evening. Um, but a lot of that group talk that we have uh, every day is now, it's, 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 it's a lot of smack talk about sports and fantasy football, but we're starting to get old now, so it's mortgages and kids and credit scores that we're talking about. Um, but I wouldn't trade those relationships with anything. I'm just thank, so thankful for this school and for Coach Neff for bringing, bringing all those guys. Um, for me to meet them and spend four years with them. Um, when you're a college athlete though, you're, you're so hyper-focused on your wins and losses and the practice field that you don't realize it's the little things off the field that are, is gonna stick with you uh, long after your playing days are over. Um, it's the time spent together on bus trips doing freshman karaoke. Basically, it was a rite of passage uh, as freshmen. Uh, the time spent getting hyped to DMX, music blaring in the locker rooms before games so loud that the lockers were shaking. Um, the relief in passing our conditioning test uh, by running, having to run um, 13, under, under 13 minutes and 30 seconds in the two mile. And a lot of times we did that before practice and then had to go practice. Thanks, coach. 
Uh, and most memorable, uh, heading to the locker room extra early before practice every day and just spend time and laugh with the crazy characters that we, guys, that we had on our teams over the years. Uh, those are the times that, that stick with me most and I'm so thankful to share those memories with my teammates. Um, I'd like to, to thank you again, Coach Neff. Uh, there's a reason why he continues to, to uh, sustain a successful men's lacrosse program uh, here. And behind, beyond the X's and O's, he really cares about building the program the right way. Uh, he cares about taking, taking boys that are fresh out of high school and, and making them into men. Um, and he, he cares about helping us build a foundation that we can take with us after graduation. Uh, it takes an unbelievable amount of patience and stress to put up with us lacrosse guys at times. Uh, pro probably all the time. I, I honestly don't know. I mean, he has, this guy has so many sleepless nights. And when I was here, he had uh, twin, twin babies that were just born. I just, I don't know how you did it. Um, but thank you for the time that you put into me and my teammates. Uh, Coach Neff is a quiet, humble guy, but you should see him get fired up uh, when the refs make a bad call. Um, it, it, I, I never told you this, but it always got me going, uh, and all of us going, to see that, um, because we could see that you cared. And, and you cared and you fought for us, and thank you so much for that. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank my closest support system. Uh, I was incredibly blessed to have parents that always believed in me, and I owe so much of my success in sports and life uh, after college to their guidance. Uh, when I first visited Carthage as a recruit um, that summer, my dad was looking through the names uh, of the Carthage Hall of Famers, and he, he turned to me and he said, maybe one day I'll see your name up there. And I will never forget that. I thought you were crazy. Um, but now that I'm a parent myself, I can see how you just believed in me. So. Thank you. Um, and now that I have a family and a full-time job, it's amazing to look back at the commitment and support that you both showed by spending all, I mean, you guys both had full-time jobs throughout the week and you spent, spent all your free time traveling all over the Midwest to see me play on weekends. Um, it means the world to me to have you both in my corner and I'm proud to celebrate with you uh, this night with you. So thank you.